Welcome back to Synapse. This is Ritika and in this video we will talk about the movements of thumb, the muscles involved in each of the movements and the nerve supply. And at the end of the video we will discuss the tests that can be done in order to understand the palsy of each of these nerves. Let's get into the movements of the thumb. First of all this is flexion, extension, adduction, abduction and opposition. Let's get into each of them in detail. Talking about flexion extension of the four digits, this is flexion and this is extension. That is, this is happening in a plane, in this plane, right? But flexion and extension of the thumb is happening in a plane which is at 90 degrees to the plane in which the rest of the fingers are moving. This is flexion and extension. Let's look at the muscles involved. For flexion, we have flexor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis brevis. Flexor pollicis longus is a muscle of the anterior compartment of the forearm or the flexor compartment of the forearm. So that is supplied by the median nerve. This flexor pollicis longus precisely causes flexion at the interphalangeal joint. Next we have the flexor pollicis brevis which is one of the muscles in the thenar eminence. This muscle is supplied again by the median nerve. And this precisely causes flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. So flexor pollicis longus and flexor pollicis brevis together is causing flexion of the thumb. Now let us look at the extension of the thumb. This is a movement for extension. Let's look at it from the back. Right? This is extension of the thumb. As you can see, this tendon is really prominent. This is extensor pollicis longus. And here we have a tendon called the extensor pollicis brevis. Just to mention over here, extensor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis, these are the boundaries of anatomical snuff box. Both of these muscles, which is extensor pollicis longus and brevis, are components of the extensor compartment of the forearm and thus it is supplied by the radial nerve. So extension of the thumb is by radial nerve. So now we have discussed about flexion and extension. Now let us look at adduction and abduction, right? Adduction, abduction. Adduction is brought about by adductor pollicis, which is one of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. And we know most of the intrinsic muscles of the hand are supplied by ulnar nerve. So adductor pollicis is also supplied by ulnar nerve. So this is adductor pollicis. About the abduction, we have abductor pollicis longus, abductor pollicis brevis. First, let us talk about the abductor pollicis brevis. So, abductor pollicis brevis is one of the thenar muscles, which means it is supplied by median nerve. Next one is abductor pollicis longus, which passes here, the tendon passes here, and it is one of the muscles of the extensor component of extensor uh, compartment of the forearm, and thus that is again supplied by the radial nerve. Okay, abductor pollicis longus supplied by radial nerve, abductor pollicis brevis being supplied by the median nerve because it's a thenar muscle. Just to add a piece of information here, as I told you already, the boundaries of anatomical snuff box is formed by the extensor uh, pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis here along with extensor pollicis brevis we have abductor pollicis longus. Okay, so now we have discussed about abduction, abductor pollicis longus, abductor pollicis brevis, radial nerve, medial nerve. The final moment for us to discuss is opposition. Opposition of thumb literally means opposing it with any of the fingers. Okay, this is opposition. This is brought about by opponent's pollicis, which is again a thenar muscle supplied by medial nerve. So to summarize the thenar muscles, we have flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, and opponent's pollicis. Okay? And again, opponent's pollicis is supplied by the median nerve. Now that we know what are the movements of the thumb, what are the muscles causing these movements, and the nerve supply of these muscles, we can clearly understand how to differentiate between different nerve palsies with respect to the movements of the thumb. First, let us consider a situation where ulnar nerve is injured. Ulnar nerve is supplying our adductor pollicis, right? That means adduction of our thumb is 
not possible or it is not strong enough we have froman's test or froman's sign where a particular sheet or book is given for the patient to hold tightly and resist it from being pulled away this is normal okay now let us say in the case of ulnar nerve injury this person is not able to adduct tightly so the person will use flexion of the thumb at the interphalangeal joint to hold the paper right when this flexion that is seen is called froman's sign positive why is this happening i'll tell that again ulnar nerve is injured so adduction is not possible but our flexor pollicis longus which was supplied by our median nerve is intact and thus the patient holds on to the paper with flexion of the thumb this is from and sign positive ulna nerve injured next thing i would like to mention about here is a deformity called as the ape thumb deformity or ape hand deformity where the thumb is in plane of rest of the fingers something like this just like a ape's hand and this you can see clearly when your opponent's pollicis is paralyzed right and that is in the case of median nerve injury right finally let us discuss what happens in case of radial nerve injury radial nerve was giving innovation to our extensor pollicis longus and brevis right that means extension of the thumb will not be uh, possible in this patient with radial nerve injury so we have a pen test where a particular pen is held above the um, hand when the palm is placed on the table like this and the patient is supposed to reach the a pen like this okay the patient is supposed to reach for the pen like this that is extension of the thumb is to be done if this is not possible then it would be considered as radial nerve injury that's all for this video i hope you found it useful do check out our instagram page at learn synapse where i'm going to put up a summarized table of the movements muscles and the nerve supply if you haven't already subscribed do subscribe to our channel like and share the video with your colleagues thank you and see you again